Diamond Hound here with another White Kings War of Clans video. So in this video we have the Heir to the Throne Hero Skin and what we're going to be doing within this video is testing the Heir to the Throne Hero Skin versus the Amaria Hero Skin. So if you guys don't know which two skins I'm talking about, the Amaria Hero Skin was a fortress based hero skin that was released in the first um, Asgard store that we had available to us. And now we have the Heir to the Throne, which also is fortress based. Um, though it's not fully fortress based, as you can, I guess, you can use this for your towns as well. But it is a new hero skin and it does look really interesting. And we have it here, so we're going to be testing it. And before we get into the testing video, I'm just going to give you a rundown of the testing video in general and explain to you what exactly we're going to be testing. So, um, you know, as most of the testing videos are concerned, what we don't test most of the times is the idea of saturation. And the main reason why saturation isn't usually test is because it's just way too expensive. You have to throw in a good full march of troops in order to understand what exactly the impact is. Um, again, for the sake of science, I've gone ahead and used some big troops in, in this experiment just to figure out the idea of saturation when it comes to testing the two hero skins that we have the main focus on. And we've divided it into three levels. So the first level is probably what we just talked about. It's the idea of saturation. So what you can see is that the pop is full of troops. We have a layer of T7 in front of it, and then there's T8s behind of it, which means that this is probably something that you would most likely see in different scenarios that you're fighting against someone in pop. They'll have some marches of T7 followed by T8s. Um, and what we end up doing is sending a full march of T7 at that. So we send one full march of T7, and then we send one full march of T8 at that target. Um, again, this is a full march. We don't do onslaughts because neither of these two skins have onslaught bonuses. And the main focus is T7s and T8s based on the skin's benefits. So we don't do other tier troops. And then we switch it to T8s where there's only one march of T8 inside. We do a T7, T T8 hit failed attack. And then lastly, we do a march of T7 inside fully, and then we do a T8 hit and a T7 hit failed attack. So this is what you're going to be seeing in the video. And uh, I will go and run through this all with you throughout the video. Um, and yeah, I hope that this video helps you out understand which skin is better. If you're having some doubts and you're looking for a test video, well, here it is.
right, so for the first test, as we just saw, um, we included the trapper just to have some sort of measure to figure out whether this is even anywhere close to the two other skins when it comes to testing on fortress attacks. Now, by the results, we can see that the trapper had an extremely low uh, score, even though the scores are pretty close to each other, right? The trapper just doesn't match up. And after the first T7 test, we didn't even think it would be necessary to test the trapper with T8s because just by the sheer points difference, it doesn't make sense to try it anymore. So, you know, we stopped the uh, waste of troops. We didn't go with a full T8 uh, march when it comes to the trapper. Again, as we can see, when we had the full T7 march that's going against the fully saturated place of power, the Amaria did better when we only sent a full march of T7. And that's because the Amaria hero skin has a T7 bonus. Now, uh, we also saw in the previous uh, clip how a full march of T8s, when we're looking between the difference in Amaria and the heir to the throne, what we can see is that the heir to the throne did better. So when, it, when we're talking about saturation, it seems to be that the Amaria does much better if you're facing a T7 wall. So if your enemy has full T7s in the pop, probably best idea is to go with the Amaria hero skin. If they have a march of T7 in front of it and then they have their main T8s, maybe the person who's sending the first OS could use the Amaria hero skin to send their OS and then the other people could send, but that would be very difficult. To me, it just seems if you're hitting with T8s against someone that's using T8s, the heir to the throne is probably the answer. And if you're using T7s and hitting someone that has T7s inside, you're probably best off using the Amaria based on this test.
All right, so we're back again. And uh, as I explained at the start of this video, um, once we're done with the full marches of saturation, we'll lower it down to see the impact of T7 versus T8 on defense, and then T7 and T8 versus T7 on defense. So in this test, we have T8 versus T8 at the start. And as I said, it would be a failed attack. And what we can see is that the heir to the throne does better, obviously, because of the T8 bonus. Um, not necessary to go into the details. We can see that it's the clear winner in this case. So heir to the throne does better when you're attacking with T8 versus T8. Even if it's a failed setting, I would assume this would copy on and move into when we're looking at a fully successful setting as well. Now, when it comes to T7s versus T8s, again, we did a test fail attack again. The heir to the throne just did better because it has that bonuses against the T8s. It makes a lot of sense that the Amaria doesn't catch up when it comes to attack. Here, lastly, with a final look at the final test that we did, we did T7s versus T8s. And what we can see is that the Amaria and the Heir to the Throne, um, basically when you, when you attack with the failed T8 march, aren't too far apart, right? The Amaria doesn't do too bad, but again, because you're attacking with T8s, the Heir to the Throne pretty much wins this uh, instance and gets the advantage. Though when we play versus a, a march of T7 inside and we are only using T7s and this is only to confirm again that the Mario skin does much better in terms of T7 versus T7 if there is enough T7s inside and the saturation again we're not really testing the saturation but if there's enough T7s and you all have the Mario hero skin you're better off using the Mario skin versus the heir to the throne and I guess 
Um, now that we're concluding, I'm sure that many of you are still wondering which of these two skins is the best thing for you to use. And, uh, you know, if you have both of them, which one would you use in different circumstances? Uh, in my opinion, if we're talking about the heir to the throne first, that is the base often skin that we have in the game. And I think that should be the often skin that you're currently going to be using for your towns and for your uh, fortress hits. You have that T8 bonus, and if you're hitting towns with T8s, it just gives you that extra advantage. Uh, again, you also have those troop offense against tier types, which seems to be the prevalent um, bonus that we see in the game that does the major difference. If you would like to go with troop-specific skins or the town attack skins, those also aren't too bad. But in terms of offense against towns, it seems that the heir to the throne would probably be the best choice, in, especially in onslaughts. If you don't know what the town has, you don't want to look through all your skins, you just throw it on, it probably would be the best choice. But if you're going with a specific hit, let's say the target is melee and you have a town skin, or if you're going for scouts, you're probably better off going with the proper hero skins for those cases. Lastly, uh, if we're talking about the Amaria and the Heir to the Throne when it comes to the Fortress or any other skins, it seems that the Heir to the Throne is much better if you're using T8s. If you're using T7s, it depends on the circumstance. If they have T7s and you're facing T7s um, and you're sending T7s, essentially the Amaria is the skin to go. Now, does that mean that the Amaria skin is not good at all or, or it's okay to miss it? No. Uh, I think the Mario Hero skin is the best skin that we have currently in the game when it comes to defense, especially when it comes to defense and fortress-based circumstances, whether it's Stronghold Siege, Pop, uh, Towers, Throne, uh, it seems that the Amaria is much more well-round. In my opinion, actually, if you're playing Throne and Pop, uh, in Jot, uh, apologies, if you're playing Throne and Jot, it makes a lot more sense to use the Amaria because you get that initial offense when you're going, and then you also get that defense uh, perk that it has while defending, which makes that the Amaria also is a, mu a much better or versatile skin when it comes to offense and defense situations where you have to attack, but you also have to defend. So um, both of these hero skins are amazing, and that's why Asgard is much more important to play than we all uh, would have thought, because these skins are probably the future of the game, and they'll be making and breaking the game. So not having them will probably put you at a very big disadvantage. So if you have the option to get both of these hero skins, you're probably best off going for them. And uh, yeah, this is my review of them. I think the Heir to the Throne is an amazing skin, but I also think that the Amaria hero skin is also awesome. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have for this video. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to share it with your clanmates or your friends if you would like them to see it as well. And uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel as every subscriber helps me get better bonuses in the streamers program. And also you show me some support, which is much appreciated. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.